Hey, third graders, I really miss you. Um, I'm going to be reading chapter 17 from our book. It's published by Scholastic New Scholastic um, because of Wynn Dixie, and this is chapter 17. Well, Litmus came home from war, said Miss Franny, as she went on with her story and found himself alone. And he sat down on what used to be the front step of his house. And he cried and he cried. He cried just like a baby. He missed his mama and he missed his daddy and he missed his sisters and he missed the boy he used to be. When he finally finished crying, he had a strange sensation. He felt like he wanted something sweet. He wanted a piece of candy. He hadn't had a piece of candy in years. And it was right then that he made a decision. Yes, ma'am. Litmus W. Block figured the world was a sorry affair and that it had enough ugly things in it and that he was going to concentrate on putting something sweet in it. He got up and started walking. He walked all the way to Florida. And the whole time he was walking, he was planning. Planning what, I asked? Why, planning the candy factory. Did he build it, I asked? Of course he did. It's still standing out on Fairfield Road. That old building, said Amanda, that big spooky one? It is not spooky, said Miss Franny. It was the birthplace of the family fortune. It was there that my great grandfather manufactured litmus lozenges, a candy that was famous the world over. I never heard of it, said Amanda. Me neither, I said. Do you think that something can be famous if you've never heard of it? Well, said Miss Franny, they aren't made anymore. The world, it seems, lost its appetite for litmus largest lozenges. But I still happen to have a few. She opened the top drawer of her desk. It was filled with candy. She, she, oh, she opened the drawer below that. It was full of candy, too. Miss Franny Block's whole desk was full of candy. Will you care for a litmus lozenge? She asked Amanda and me. Yes, please, said Amanda. Sure, I said. Can Win Dixie have one, too? I have never known a dog that cared for hard candy, said Miss Franny. But he is welcome to try one. Do you think dogs should eat hard candy? Miss Franny gave Amanda one litmus lozenge and me too. I, I wrapped one and held it out to Win Dixie. He sat up, sniffed it, and wagged his tail and took the candy from between my fingers real quick. He tried to chew on it, and when that didn't work, he just swallowed the whole thing in one gulp. Then he wagged his tail at me and laid back down. I ate my litmus lozenge slow. It tasted good. It tasted like root beer and strawberry and something else I didn't have a name for. Something that made me feel kind of sad. I looked over at Amanda. She was sucking on her candy and thinking hard. Do you like it? Miss Franny asked me. Yes, ma'am, I told her. What about you, Amanda? Do you like the litmus lozenge? Yes, ma'am, she said. But it makes me think of things I feel sad about. I wonder what in the world Amanda Wilkinson had to feel sad about. She wasn't new in town. She had a mama and a daddy. I had seen them with her. I had seen her with them in church. Do you think a person can be sad even if they have everything you think that they should have? There's a secret ingredient in there, Miss Franny said. I know it, I told her. I can taste it. What is it? Sorrow, 
said Miss Franny said. Not everybody can taste it. Children especially seem to have a hard time knowing it's there. I taste it, I said. Me too, said Amanda. Well then, said Miss Franny, you probably both had your share of sadness. I had to move away from Watley and leave all my friends, I said. That is one of the saddest things I've ever had to do. And Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry are always picking on me. That's another sadness. And the biggest one, my biggest sadness, is that my mama left me when I was still small. And I can hardly remember her. I keep hoping I'll get to meet her and tell her some stories. It makes me miss Carson, said Amanda. She sounded like she was about to cry. I have to go. She got up and almost ran out of the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. Who's Carson? I asked Miss Franny. She shook her head. Sorrow, she said. It is a sorrow-filled world. But how do you put that in a piece of candy, I asked her. How do you get that taste in there? Do you think that um, when you eat something, you can taste people's feelings like sadness or hurt or uh, happiness? Can you take, do you think you can taste that? That's the secret, she said. That's why Litmus made a fortune. He manufactured a piece of candy that tasted sweet and sad at the same time. Can I have a piece to take to my friend Gloria Dunlap? I mean, don't. And another one to take to Otis down in Gertrude's Pets. And one for the preacher. And one for Sweetie Pie, too. You may have as many as you want, said Miss Franny. So I stuffed my pockets full of litmus lozenges. And I thanked Miss Franny for her story. And I checked out Gone with the Wind, which was a big book. And I told Winn Dixie to get up, and the two of us left and went over to Gloria Dumps. I rode right past the Dewberry's house. Dunlap and Stevie were playing football in the front yard, and I was just getting ready to stick out my tongue at them. But then I thought about what Miss Franny had said about war being bad, about not judging them too hard. And so I just waved instead. They stood and stared at me. But when I was almost way past, I saw Dunlap stick up his hand in the air and wave. Hey, he hollered. Hey, Opal. I waved harder and I thought about Amanda Wilkinson and about how it was neat that she liked a good story the same as I did. And I wondered again, who was Carson. Who do you guys think Carson is? Um, I want to hear from you. Think about the questions that I asked through this story. I'm going to go ahead to chapter 18, maybe later on tonight. I hope you're having a good time at home. I miss you guys as always. I miss seeing you and hearing from you. And I hope you're having fun. I'll talk to you later.